Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lola Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Press this, and you can see this, hear this, taste this, and experience this. Press the green button at Ireland.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. We hope you're all having a lovely Christmas time at home. Now usually this time of the year we look back on some of the shows that we have broadcast over the last 12 months. And of course we've been really busy this year. We've been running up and down the country filming and broadcasting your wonderful stories. Now we're going to begin with a visit to Hilary Joyce Owens who is the founder of the Skull Rins Keymore School of Irish Dancing in London. And Hilary was celebrating 30 years teaching Irish dancing. So I established Skull Rinky Keymore back in 1992, 30 years this year. And of course over that time you've had huge success as well. We have had huge success um, with the school over the last 30 years. We've won mostly almost every international title, boys and girls, um, that you can win. We have several locations, so Ealing is one of our main locations, and then we have locations in Surrey, in Kent, and in Bristol. How do I manage it? Um, probably not an awful lot of sleep. I'm probably obsessed with Irish dancing and I think to be at the level that we have been at for the last 30 years, it is a slight obsession. My mum has been my teacher for the last 18 years now um, and she really encouraged me to get into it and I fell in love with it. I was going to classes um, from a newborn and I always loved the music and watching the other girls dance so that's how I got into it. Your mum has done a fantastic job so far. <laughs> She's an absolute brilliant teacher, brilliant coach and my best friend throughout the whole journey. I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. So we haven't had a World Championships for the last two years. Once that announcement came that it was happening over the Easter period, it was like, okay, everybody was on. The attitudes 
of all the dancers changed, like, you know, shifted gears. It's been really tough. I mean, we train six days a week, but overall it's quite enjoyable. <laughs> Are you looking forward to going to Belfast? Yes, I am. I'm really excited. Do you think there's going to be a lot of people watching you over there? Yes, really big audience. We've uh, got a few weeks to go, but uh, five more weeks and by the time we'll be ready. Now, of course, we've been watching you here all morning, preparing, doing lots and lots of rehearsals. A lot of work has gone into this to actually just reach Belfast alone. Yeah, it has um, months and months of preparation, uh, qualifiers, competitions, yeah, just loads and loads of hard work. We do have a lot of children who come in just to learn how to uh, be able to Irish dance. So they never, they don't have to compete to that top level. They don't have to stay. There's a, cl there's a place for everybody within our class. I started when I was around the age of six. It was, a, it was an after school club at my local primary school and my mum encouraged me to do it because she had previ previously danced when she was in New Zealand. So. I kind of wanted to follow what she did. Um, at the moment, leading up to the world, we're in class five or six days a week, and then outside of class, we're stretching, going to the gym, going to personal training, and practicing away at home. A busy morning here this morning. Yeah, so we're, we're training for the World Championships in April, and uh, it's, just, it's very big, it's like the Olympics. At the age of five, I won the All Scotland competition, uh, the All Scotland Championships, which was a big shock to everybody. It was a great moment and one that's definitely for the history books. I'll remember that for ages. And um, other national competitions like the North American Nationals, the All Island Championships, Great Britain's British Nationals, um, and throughout the course of the 18 years. We enjoyed meeting Hilary and of course her great team and all her wonderful dancers. Now we all know the wonderful work that the Leeds Irish Health and Homes do for our Irish community in Leeds and right across Yorkshire. And this year was a very special year for them because they were celebrating 25 years in existence. It was also a special occasion for the Chief Executive Ant Hanlon who was there from the very first day and their chairperson, Rachel Loftus, also received the MBE. It really is a special event. Um, you know, we planned it last year, we wanted to celebrate in style, but unfortunately because of the pandemic we weren't able to, so it's just been brilliant to get the community in, get service users, staff, volunteers, all those people that have supported us over 25 years, 20, 25 plus one years. Um, uh, it's just great to see, uh, and, and I think as you, you'll have seen tonight, that uh, you know, our, our values of care, culture and community just ring out so loudly. Um, yeah, it makes, makes me very proud. We started because of the need uh, you know, to help people, Irish people that were in need. There was people who uh, were finding it hard maintaining housing or their mental health was, was poor. Um, so we, we stepped in and we just tried to do something. It was uh, unfortunate, of course, last year because of COVID. They weren't able to have the celebration for the 25th. So, it, But wonderful for the 25th plus one uh, that I've been able to be here to participate as well. So uh, really, it's an honour for me to represent the Irish government. I know last year for the celebrations, they were online and the ambassador uh, was able to read out a, a message from President Higgins, who sent his congratulations to them last year. So. It was great for me then to be here in person representing the government. I was amazed at the, the work they've done and the contribution they've made to the life of the city for the Irish community. Of course the Irish community are, are a very important part of our city and the diversity of the city and they bring their culture and the good sense of humour and all the other wonderful things they do for the people who want support. I often talk to people about the, 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 the value of volunteering. Um, it's You never know what's going to happen in your life, but if you 
give of your time, amazing doors will open. There are things that have, I've been privileged to do since I first said yes um, to Leeds Irish Health and Homes. You've also received the MBE and many congratulations. We're all delighted to see you receive that last year. Oh, thank you. Now, um, I would say as ever, it's always a team effort. I think the pandemic, um, whilst it challenged us to our very core, um, both as a country and as a city, um, I think what we've seen is the best of our communities coming out and facing that up to the challenge of that pandemic. The Leeds United team, hearing of his dedicated service, um, gave us a shirt and signed it for him. It was a complete shock. I had no idea that that was going to happen. I'm, I'm so overwhelmed uh, with, with the, the wonderful words that people have said and the lovely things that people have said. And um, yes, I, I, it was like a gift from God uh, to get the job. We just wanted to say thank you to the community for all the, you know, the, all the support, and particularly over COVID as well. We've had built so, so many good relationships with the Irish community, different societies, and over, you know, in the last few years. So today was just a great day, you know, and it's going over at the moment, and it's going brilliantly, and we're just so pleased and so happy. The thing about Leeds Irish Health and Homes really is our ethos, that care, culture, and community, um, and that's been with us from day one, um, and it makes such a difference. Many congratulations to everyone at the Leeds Irish Health and Homes. Now we all know that over the last couple of years it's been a really difficult time for all our Irish centres. Well we went along to the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester for its reopening day and Sarah Mangan, the Consul General for Ireland and the North of England was on hand to cut the ribbon. delighted to be here and I hear so many stories about what a great centre it is. It's certainly, I mean, it's an amazing building. Definitely one of the best Irish centres I've ever been in. Uh, so delighted to see it open again, yeah, and delighted to be a part of it. It's become a kind of repository for the Irish community, I think, in Manchester, which is lovely to see as well because you've got, I mean, obviously the Irish community has been such a part of Manchester really from the beginning. Um, as it grew to be a great city, the Irish story was always an integral part of it. And you can see some of that reflected here in the Irish World Centre. And it's lovely to have a centre like that, this that recognises the Irish contribution to Manchester and to the region in general. It feels amazing to have so many people in the building after a long, long time of being closed, Martin. It really is a good atmosphere, as you can hear in the background in there. You know, it's a fairly new building, but because it had been utilised so much, there was a lot of interior work that needed doing before we could reopen. It's been a very stressful couple of weeks getting the whole thing redecorated, rejigged, the garden sorted out with my counterpart here, Mr Conway. Uh, we've been doing all sorts of things. Uh, it's been it's marvellous. Pat's worked exceptionally hard. Um, he's been out in the back, cutting the grass, uh, trimming the benches, sorting everything out. Yes, absolutely. You've got to have your weddings and everything, the parties out in the garden. And there's lovely trees there. When you see it in the summertime, it will be beautiful. You've been involved with the Irish World Heritage Centre for a very long time. Uh, since 85. And I'll be here ever since. And I'd like to see it like to see it going well now. We gather in prayer on this day to mark the formal reopening of the Irish Centre. And today we remember those who've gone before us into the love of God over these past two years. Have their memories uh, the times that you've shared with them and we pray for them today. After two years of being closed because of the Covid regulations um, there's a lot of work to be done and people who have turned up here they've come along I'm, I've just got a couple of hours spare how can I help you just come and do this come and do that a little bit of cleaning a little bit of this marvellous. Here we are tonight with everything looking lovely and the changes that have taken place as well. It's been a brilliant evening, especially now for our members and as chairman representing them, I'm delighted for them. We hope that this coming year will be a far better year for all our Irish centres. Now we're going to take a break and we'll be back with you in two minutes.
Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Redditch, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Press this, and you can see this, hear this, taste this, and experience this. Press the green button at Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now on this week's show, we're looking back at some of the programs we've broadcast over the last 12 months. Now the Park Festival in Birmingham was a huge success with some big names like Nathan Carter, Imelda May and many more. Kieran Healy and his team done a wonderful job. Yeah, it's really come together. We're delighted with all the support we've received and I think everyone's happy with the infrastructure and bands and the atmosphere. It's been a, it's been a great turnout and we, we thank everyone for coming. Melda was amazing. Hot House Flowers, their performance was unreal. Um, yeah, it was a superb debut yoga. Damien Dempsey was great. Um, and Hermitage Green, um, they were brilliant. Yeah, great day. Weather's made it, yeah, yeah. We're going to get the same weather next year, I'm sure we are. We've got something for everyone. We've got VIP areas, we've got bars, we've got food traders, we've got lots of Guinness, plenty of Guinness on tap. We've got our second stage over in the far end of the festival, which is our traditional stage. We've got Scanlon School of Dance, we've got trad music going on, rigmarole's playing. It's, yeah, it's our trad area. <laughs> Sharon, my goodness, you just come off stage there. What a reception you got. Oh, thank you, Martin. Uh, great to see you. Great to be here. Fantastic festival. Lovely all together. Well, it was a great day to be here. And sure, look at Sharon Shannon music is renowned all over the world. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Festivals are just so, so nice to play always. Really, really. We love playing festivals and, and uh, the audience make it. And I know you flew in specially for this one. We did, yeah, we came over just for, for the one show. Came over this morning, heading back tomorrow. My goodness, Callum, what a magnificent site you've got here for the new Ira Centre. We may certainly have. The weekend festival has been absolutely fantastic and hopefully has put the Irish Centre on the map to show that we're a family, community-based centre. 
we're actually going to knock the Irish Centre down and we're going to build a big hotel with a bar and restaurant and function rooms. And we're also going to have a lot of different Irish community-based yeah. projects going on here. Lovely day here, lovely place. It is, and there's great anticipation. Nathan is coming on stage later on. Oh, they can't wait. Haven't seen him yet. Well, I'm hoping, as you'll see from the crowds today, that people have really got behind it and come out and supported it. And particularly after lockdown, people are looking for a bit of enjoyment and the crack. And the plan is to grow it into the biggest music festival in the UK. Well, we wanted to try and make this about the culture of Ireland as well. So we've got the wonderful Irish dancers who were here yesterday and today with us trad sessions all through the day to compliment the artists on the main stage so yeah it's been wonderful all around <laughs> just met uh, Finbar Fiori there, what a legend, he's taken to the stage now and Sharon Shannon was on before, and just amazing to see it and, and uh, I think it's great for, for the whole Irish community around England and uh, please God it'll be here for many many years to come. It's great to see uh, festivals like this popping up around England, you know we had Crack by the Creek recently and uh, we've done a few in Liverpool but this is the first I've seen in Birmingham for a long time so Amazing setup, huge stage, massive production, and thankfully a load of tickets sold. So I think there's going to be four or five thousand people here tonight. So very excited. We really enjoy the Park Festival, and I can't wait for next year's one. Now Mark Canney has been in the Bowling Green pub in Charlton, Manchester for 20 years and Mark and his family arranged a big celebration and we went along to join them. Yeah, we had, uh, we had like a couple of bands on Friday and Saturday night and then yesterday was more of a family day with, uh, and we had the trad session on the night time and to be honest with you, I'm definitely feeling my age today. It was uh, but a great crack and um, Fair play, thanks to all my fantastic regulars for all the 20 years. They all came out in full spirit. I came here on the 10th of June in 2002 and um, I genuinely thought I'd actually only be here like a couple of years and I'd maybe move on. But I thought, fell in love with the area, fell in love with the place. It was more bellowing smoke, pool, darts, domino. And like over the years, we've kind of moved towards like families, friends, and particularly like food would be a major part of our business. Yesterday evening you had Grace Kelly and the big traditional Irish music group and everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, Sundays are a major thing for us now. Um, Grace played pre-lockdown and she came back, but weirdly we've come back stronger and bigger than ever. So normally on a Sunday there'll be at least 20 people playing and there'll be a good crowd of like 50 to 80. It's been very much our family staple pub and mum and I always come in here for the Mayo games, absolutely adore it, uh, wonderful, yeah. yeah. And of course your, your late father of course was a great supporter of the Bowling Green and he loved the Gaelic football as well. Yes, absolutely, him and Mark had a great affinity towards each other and Mark really holds a special place in my mum and my heart, so yeah. Things like the Irish club and now sort of they've gone and things but this was always the stalwart, it was uh, a partnership, you'd always come here first and end the night in there and I think now Everyone comes here and obviously with the GAA, um, everybody's just, it's so inclusive here, it really is, it's lovely. Yeah, we show all the Gaelic and stuff like that and all the Irish matches. Um, I'm a Cork man myself and we haven't been very successful, but I'm praying for Mayo. We have a flag at the end that they asked me to sponsor, so, um, with the Bowling Green. So most people come in and go, oh, whereabouts of Mayo are you from? But I have to kind of point out that my parents from the west of Ireland, but I firmly am a Cork man and uh, our hurling is a bit in short supply at the moment, but I'm sure we'll come good. I helped Mark run this place for a few years um, before I went out to Australia. And then, yeah, um, still play football with Mark on a on Monday night as well. So yeah, it's the, the tried and tested pub all the time, so. And now you're bringing along the younger generation. Yeah, this is their first visit to the bowler, so Woo! first of many. <laughs> Our St. Patrick's Day twinnies. Yeah. Our St. Patrick's Day twinnies, yes. 
We've got Orla, Mary and Ronan Patrick. I find that there was people that were regulars with me 20 years ago. They've settled down, they've had kids, they've matured. And as I've got older, they've actually joined me on the bandwagon and we can kind of understand one another's lives of uh, juggling the kids and the family life. Mark has turned the Bowling Green pub into the hub of the Irish community in Charlton. Now, Ireland the show has been touring the UK all during the year. And we caught up with Gary Gamble and all the cast at the Plaza Theatre in Stockport. She's the court in one, two, three. Please have to tell me who is she. Ireland's show, Mark, is a celebration of Irish music, song and dance and crack, comedy and everything that comes with it. And um, if you've never been to Ireland's show, well, you're going to have to uh, come to see the show. It's going to start Irish dancing, all the lovely ballads, the town I love so well, the Wild Rover, uh, Tell Me Ma, Fields of Bath and Rye, uh, Dirty Old Town and much, much more. It's definitely worth coming to see. I love you well today and I love you more tomorrow if you ever love me. My name is Elaine Boyle, I'm from County Donegal and um, I'm here as part of the Ireland show, enjoying every minute of it. I'm a country singer from Donegal but uh, first time working with um, James and all the gang here and loving every minute of it. So. Well, I've been singing with Gary for a long time, nearly 20 years, myself and Gary go back. We um, had a wee band together years ago. In the town I loved so well. Well done folks. We're back in the UK next March again um, to do it all again. So if you're at home and you want to go see Ireland, the show, uh, certainly check us out for next year's tour dates on jmgmusicgroup.com. I'm from Balladrine, County Mayo, the Mayo side, very important. Um, and I'm a dancer here, an Irish dancer with Ireland, the show. So delighted to be travelling around the UK. And while I'm here as well, I brought the car and I'm doing some driving workshops. I'm also a full-time social dance teacher back home in Ireland. So do you know what? It's something a bit different. I've been working with shows for many years um, across the UK and Germany and, and America. But for me, this one has been the most enjoyable because there is so many different aspects to it. And uh, it covers everything to do with Irishness. I've been dancing myself for 26 years now, uh, so a very long time. And I, for the last six years, I've been touring with different dance shows around the world. Um, I've been on tour with Ireland, the show, for the past five and a half weeks, and it's been br brilliant. I just really love dancing, so I've made it, uh, I've made it my whole career. Richie, great to see you here tonight in Stockport. Great to see you too, Martin. Great to be here with you. Well, I know, look, what you've been uh, well famous and we've all followed your music. You've had some great songs released. That's right. We've, uh, we've uh, had Tet to Death and then a ton of young good in it at the minute. Hells of Connemara has been trending really well, so that's still going great. We're, we're very busy with festivals and stuff. This tour's taking up a good bit of the uh, summer now. Um, I go back and I do a lot of weddings and I do festivals and do all that type of things and do that dances as well, so very, very busy. Well, it's a good stroll down the road by Bob Bob D-I-E-I-A I met a little girl in the south to talk on a fight south D-I-A And he asked you, Fred, what's a fella to do? Cos her hair was black and her eyes were blue If you get a chance to go along and see the show this coming year, you'll really enjoy it. Now, on behalf of all the team here at the Irish in the UK, we would like to wish you all a very happy, holy and peaceful Christmas. And we'll see you next week. Press the green button at Ireland.com.